Episode five. Episode five. How's Drop your, and run. How was your weekend? My weekend was good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Spring hits here in Minnesota it and does. Uh, hits hard. So yeah, everybody just whoo, yeah. outside. Yours? Yeah, it was good. We got a lot of uh, a lot of garden stuff done. Uh, my wife and I are big gardeners and you know whatnot. So yeah, we got a lot of things planned. She does a lot of cut flowers. I do a lot of veggies and fruits and herbs. So. Yeah. Fun with the pups, fun outside. and Yeah, we should tell people it. that you have two enormous Great Danes. We do, I, I do. Maybe they'll make an appearance sometime. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> yep, we have yeah. two Great Danes. Well, we have a male four-year-old um, called Major, and then we have a one-year-old female called Riot. Who typically lives up to her name. She does. Because she, she is a riot. absolutely does. And she creates riots. <laughs> she does. Just ask Major. She, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Her full name is Riot Mayhem Chaos. Really? No, no. Oh, you just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. It should be, though. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a good weekend. So Yeah. But looking forward to today. Yeah. Um, yeah, episode five. Hit me with the topic. So we're going to talk about a, a topic that is super important, super critical. Um, yeah. In, in fact, you can't really ever stop talking about it, but okay. in some ways it's talked about too much. Okay. And that's leadership. Ooh, yes. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah. Definitely. That is uh, so that's a loaded topic. Too. It is a loaded. And, and, I, and I have a feeling, I, you know, we were talking a little bit before we, we fired it up today. There, there might be a little controversy here there today. Is, there is. Yeah. I, th- I think there might be. You, okay, so... For those of you who haven't watched our last episode, episode four on culture branding, I thought that one was short. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking we were clocking in at 15, 20 minutes max. Lo, lo and behold, it was our longest one and it was yeah. like 36 minutes. So I was about to say this might be a long one, but yeah. I'm no judge of time anymore. Yeah. Who knows? You yeah. might think it's five minutes and an hour and a half later. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So For when real. you think about leadership, yeah. so there's uh what do we figure approximately 10 years difference, age difference here? Yeah. Maybe or 20. No. Well. Yeah. 20. Feels more like 10, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's because 20. you're so mature yeah, that's and I'm right. immature. <laughs> yeah, 20. 20, right. 20 years difference. Yep. So when you think of leadership, just the whole yeah. the whole thing, yep. just vague, ambiguous, yep. non-leading question, what comes to mind? Um, right off the top of my head, just like right like that, uh, guidance, I guess. Okay. Guidance. Um, I, I might think of leadership a little bit differently than your average person, though. Okay. So for me, yeah, when I think of leadership, the things that come to mind are guidance, uh, direction, like helping, assistance, leading from the back, um, okay. things like that. I And we'll get into this more, but I view leadership and management very differently. So for me, leadership is... Um, helping drive the strategy, the angle, the direction, things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and really being there to help people. Okay. You know, for me, leadership isn't necessarily a strictly business right terminology, right? But those are some of the quick things. What about you? What do you think of first things come out of your head? Yeah, a couple things. So um, I'm in my mid fifties, um, almost like literally in the mid fifties, and so some of the things that come to mind for me are uh, vision, mm-hmm. um, clarity. Mm-hmm. Uh, believe it or not, loneliness. Okay. Um, because I think that true leaders a lot of times find themselves uh, very alone. Um, the other thing that I think at this point in my life and my career that comes to mind when I think of leadership is myself. Okay. That so many times people want to be a leader, yet they fail to apply those leadership principles and those disciplines to themselves. Yeah. I think we fail point. to lead yeah. ourselves more than you know any other leadership yeah. issue out yeah. there so That's true. um yeah yeah so and i i also think that the leadership the act of leadership the role of leaders has changed dramatically huge um, yeah in the last bunch of years and, absolutely and so we need to talk a little bit about that there's a um there's a um a, a, a new phrase that that we have been talking about toxic yeah. Leadership. Toxic leadership. And, and yep. we'll probably, um, in fact, almost certainly talk more about that in future podcasts yeah. because it's so prevalent. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the toxic way that people speak, the toxic personalities that people have, the narcissism that influences a lot of leaders that... Yeah, which which leads to a topic, uh, toxic culture in yeah, the workplace. Right, so, right. And how we talk about that always starts with the leaders and upper management and things like that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, toxic leadership is a huge thing, not only from maybe some leaders that are going to be watching this, but also employees that can like really relate to that, you yeah, know? Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, toxic leadership is a huge thing. And I think we'll get into that a little right, bit. Right, right. So let's let's start out by talking yeah. about uh, the difference. You, you alluded to this already. The difference mm-hmm. between leading and managing yep. or leaders and managers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think? I think um, for, for the people that know me or even know us, I think um, I, I, I try to break it down easy for people by saying like... Uh, you don't you you don't manage people right and that might be a, a topic of discussion right some people sure. might argue that yep. but to me you manage budgets you manage processes Absolutely. you manage workflow you manage scheduling right. um, ordering logistics yeah, supply perfect. chain things like that totally agree you lead people amen you, you know you lead that that emotion side that um like you said the vision the clarity those are the leadership qualities yep, right it's yep. not always a tangible thing and it's more of a personal relationship type aspect to leadership yep yep um, absolutely kind of like i mentioned when we start the, the guidance the being there for people um another thing is it, it Another like maybe a good example of leadership versus management. And I want to hear what an example you would use too. Yeah. But for me, a, a good kind of example would be leadership would be asking the question, do you have all the tools to do your job correctly, safely? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel valued? Do you mm-hmm. feel like you can be successful? Are you even in a role that you see you want your career to go? Management is here's what I want you to do. Here's the project. Do it. Do it by this time. Yeah no questions asked. Don't come to me until it's done or yeah. whatever it may right. be. Right. Here's your, here's your, this is what you have to do. Right. No yeah. questions. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the, the difference. No, I, I, I think see. I'm, I'm, I'm right in line with where you're at. I think you yeah. lead people and you manage processes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you lead from the front and you manage from the back or the, okay. the side. Um, I think that the leadership many times is very, uh, kind of emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, management is more about the tasks and the activities. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you a question. Why, how come you said lead from the front versus lead from the back? Cause I think historically when people think of leadership and management, you think of the manager being like, this is what we're doing. Everybody fall in line, do this. And leadership is like, you know, I'm going to stand back. I'm going to make sure you guys have all the tools you want to do now go and do it. And I'm going to be here to support you. Yeah. I think leadership, um, one of, one of the key, um, responsibilities of, leaders and leadership whether it's an individual or a group is to um it's overused but vision Mm -hmm. you have to create a vision a strategic plan a strategic vision strategic destination you have to see where you're going and in many cases once leaders have that determined defined they go through that discernment process that planning process saying that's where we want to go Part two of that is to communicate that in a very compelling, meaningful, mm-hmm. realistic, and practical way to say, here's where we are, here's where we're going to go, and you do that yeah. from the front. Now, to your point, I think leadership also, once that that destination has been identified, you communicate where we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. Then sometimes I think they step aside, okay, or they go, go yeah. to the skybox, or yep. the 50,000 foot level, or whatever yeah, people yeah, yeah, want yeah. to call it, and you observe all the activities. Now, the, the, the managers, the frontline people, the, the customers, the market, you can watch that activity going, but mm-hmm. I agree with what you're saying there that you're off to the side yeah. or in the back watching the activity. Yeah. But at certain moments, I think you need to step in front again and do a course correction. Yeah. No, I think you brought, bring up a really good point because I think there's one, like we just said, there's one crop of people that want to say leaders lead from the back and there's another crop of people, which is a very valid point, leaders lead from the front. I think as talking this through, in my mind, I'm like, well, it's it's almost like leader is spherical or kind of much like branding where it exists in many different aspects, depending on what part of the process you're in, mm-hmm. right? You have to create that vision, then there's supporting roles and all this kind of stuff. Yep. So it's, I, man, I, I might even, after <laughs> talking this out, I might even change my mind about yeah. how leadership is viewed just from like a, how people visually want to interpret yeah, right, it, you know what right, I mean? Where leadership right. can be all over. It's not necessarily from the back or the front. Yeah. They might be there at different times. Right. I, yeah, that's yeah, interesting. I, yeah, exactly. Um, I think there's a couple other things about what I like to call modern day leadership. And I think there's um, there's a couple of privileges left for leaders and that's about it. One, I think leaders many times, not all the time, but many times do get to dictate conversation and agenda. Okay. They get to determine... We are going to talk about this. We are not going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other couple things that leaders, the last privileges that they have is the ability to um, add resources. Yep. You know, many times the yeah. resources are at their disposal, financial resources, human resources, you know, tools, assets, whatever. 
And then the third thing is to remove barriers. The leaders have yeah, that yeah. influence, yeah. that position to get things out of the way or make changes that um, are necessary for people to get things done. Yeah, no. And, and one thing to your first point there, I just wanted to be clear because some people like watching around, you might be asking or you might be thinking about like, what kind of leaders do we have at our company or what kind of leader am I or, you know, who's ever watching this? You're going to be asking yourself these questions as you're hearing us talk about leadership. And to your first point, dictating what's like being talked about or said at the time or the direction you're going. I want to be like um, transparent that that doesn't, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that comes from a standpoint of because they want to like dictate that and they want to, it's not authoritative in that sense. It's like leaders have the, um, with great power comes great responsibility. They have the responsibility to lead the direction, the vision. Yes. So if they're saying, this is what we're talking about, or this is what we have to do right now, it's not because they don't care what you want to do or what might else could be the right direction. It's that's their job, their position to lead you in the right direction. Even if it might not be exactly what you would agree, agree with at the time, Yes. it's just a necessary step at that time. And you have to hope that they're leading you in the right direction. So nice bridge into another dynamic of... Um, again, what I like to call this modern day leadership and it's changed that yeah. um, you alluded to that dictator. Yeah. Um, I fondly, jokingly, candidly refer to the old leadership style as management by fear or leadership by fear and intimidation. Yeah, yeah. And, and I joke sometimes like all the good old days, <laughs> you know, when you could just intimidate people, when you could yeah, scare them, yeah, yeah. when you could dangle their paycheck or their yeah. bonus over yeah. them and say, do what I want you to do yeah. or you don't get all the goodies. Yeah. You can't get away with that anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, the, the, people will blog about you. They'll set up a, a website. I mean, they will create an enormous uproar online in the world if they don't like how they're they're treated. In the old days, the the boss, you know, the new person would show up and say, you know, you know, welcome to the company. I'm your boss. Here's what you need to know about me for you to be successful. Yep, yeah, yep. You can't do that anymore. No. I got out of college in the in the late eighties and not that I wanted to try that and I don't think I actually did, but it was there were a couple times where I tried to assert what I wanted to get done rather than what needs to happen these days, which is to engage. Yeah, yeah. So now that conversation is much like, welcome to the company. You know, I'm your supervisor. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, um, what do I need to know about you yes, for you to yes. be successful? Yep, yep. People feel more valued. They feel more heard. And a lot of times like my generation and younger, that's a huge thing that they are looking for in the work. Yes. In the workforce. And you alluded to, you can't, do that or you can't get away with that because people will blog about you or talk about you or whatever it may be. Also what the pandemic has showed us and what the younger generations believe in um, my, myself included is that they're like values, right? I think the old school way of thinking like you were talking about was I'm going to get out of company. I'm going to stay there. I'm a lifer. I'm going right. to stay there <laughs> yeah. for 40 years and then I'm going to retire yep. or whatever it is, yep. you know? Um, whereas these days there's not as much brand loyalty unless it's what, exactly what they want in terms of like do they feel valued do they feel appreciated do they feel heard do they feel like they're a part of a great team for a larger purpose right so if just like i said the pandemic taught us people are learning things right things got kind of yes. thrown in a blender and yeah. spit out the other way and yes. and it was like oh i guess i don't need to do this or i don't need to be treated like that or i you know whatever it may be right. and so yeah that just it doesn't that doesn't cut it anymore people are people don't and people don't need to do that anymore right right like right. it's and again to your point it's up to leadership to make those necessary adjustments because that authoritative manager yeah is going to the wayside i believe it was the last podcast you and i alluded to a circumstance where there was a business owner that mm -hmm. you know wanted to have their their frontline people dealing with customers yeah, yeah. Um, expand what they were offering offer another product or yeah. service yep and um the ceo went and said look i've, I've figured out how to you know, spiff these guys, we can figure it into our pricing. Yep. Um, it would not impact the profitability mm -mm. in any way whatsoever. So everybody totally agreed. But in that case, the owner said, I'm not doing it. I don't care what they think. That's their job. Um, that is a very, very old school, yeah. massively ineffective way of leading people. You said something a moment ago that people want, and I'm going to change it. People need to be understood. They yep. need to know at this point, not just in their personal lives. This isn't that, you know, participation trophy. Yeah, yeah, that's no, not no, what no, I'm saying no, here. No. They, leaders need to take the time to engage people in a conversation. So it's not like, I think I understand you as the leader. You feel legitimately understood. Yes. The organizational 
um, uh, the organizational management research will tell us eight out of 10 people will go along with a decision they disagree with as long as they feel they've been hurt. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. That's, that's a great powerful. stat. It is absolutely. Yeah. Um, gosh, I was just thinking of a point now, now I'm forgetting. Oh, when you were talking about that example, right? Let alone the example you get, let, like if you peel back the layers of that example and you think, okay, won't, it, won't affect profitability. Yeah. It will provide a better experience for the customer, holistic range of products and services, Absolutely. feel taken care of, one-stop shop, all yes. these kind of things. Yes. So in no way is anybody losing, but it's because of that authoritative leadership, whether it's not something they thought of or whether they think it's just, nope, that's their job. That's how they have to do it. We're not going to do it any differently. The inability, the the rigidity, the inability to... Uh, pivot or mold or you know right. work with people right. that's a prime example of why that doesn't work right and, and when you say nothing's been lost in the mind of that very outdated dinosaur of a leader yeah, yeah, yeah. is their perceived notion that they've lost control yes yes when leadership these days is i mean it's about empowering um it's about engaging delegating mm -hmm. all of that good stuff and there is. I mean, I, I think we all face that sometimes where you give something up and then if you surround yourself with people at least as good as you, I think th truly good leaders these days are hiring people better than themselves. Yeah. You do run the risk of people saying, well, why do we need you? I think that's a great dynamic and indicator of good leadership when mm -hmm. you've got a very high functioning team, a high performing team, and they individually or collectively wonder, What's the yeah, what, person in the corner? What are they doing do again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they brought us here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They I, got us engaged in this. And the, the one dynamic of that leader that's far above anybody else is they're a great facilitator. Yeah, they're a great yes, yes. engager. Yep. I am definitely of the mindset of you, right. You're hiring people for a specific job, but to dumb it way down, I always, I always talk about the, you hire uh, an electrician to do electrical work. You hire a plumber, to do plumber work. You don't, you don't hire a plumber to do an electrical right. job. Right? right. So when you take that to to a business standpoint, like whoever, you, whoever's watching right now, like you got hired for a specific job, right? Just like I've been hired for a specific job. You've been hired for a specific job. Good leaders have to trust that if they made that hire, that person is going to do that job. Whereas yes. the authoritative manager is like, I'm hiring a job to do what like I want you to do, yes. right? I see it a certain way. So you're just going to work on my idea or my process. Whereas right. like, say you're in marketing or sales and you, you know, you, you market a certain way, you have this, the skills, the education, all this stuff, because that's what puts you number one during that job hunt. Yeah. So they hired you for a reason. Good leaders will say, yes, we hired you for that reason. Go do it. Yes. And we are here. If you need anything, we will give you kind of the direction, the vision, like you said, where's, where's kind of the end goal now do your thing. Yes. Right. Instead of I'm going to add another crony to my, you know, bandwagon here i'm right. going to add another robot to just regurgitate what i want yeah. it's just yeah. and i think that those people those cultures those executive teams are so painfully obvious these yeah. days yeah. um you're also bringing up another point that we hit i think in third podcast which was um you know the hard and the soft skills mm -hmm. with i think the market contracting and i think labor um well i mean there's a bunch of labor issues but i think there are a lot of um people that are available to do jobs as it relates to the hard skill side. Yeah. What I see from some of the, the high functioning leaders, the, the, the truly great leaders is there, there's so many good people on the hard skill side that you can almost have your pick. And those great leaders are looking at the soft skills, you know, are the people that are coming on, do they have the ability to work with and through other people? How is their communication skills? Are they good at engaging people? Are, are they good at facilitation skills, problem solving the whole, um, emotional quotient, a, a very yeah. steady temperament. So, I, and and that just reminded me that maybe some people that are watching this, if they're if you're a business owner or business leader, you might be like, well, I'm not hiring right now, but how do I know if I have those kind of people? Well, I think it's easy to understand if you have those type of people, but how can you um, like enhance that or adjust that or change that or implement some of these things that we're talking about? And I think that's like, that's what we do. I mean, that's, that's what it's easy for us to talk about leadership and business processes as it pertains to leadership. Um, because that's, I mean, that's one of the things we're best at in terms of 
Yeah. Yep. These dynamics, right. you know. So one, obviously we're doing these podcasts because we want to share thoughts and ideas yeah. and we want to stir yeah. up some interest and we want to be very open and upfront about that. Yeah. Um, at the same time, um, that's the purpose of this isn't just to, to push our uh, services. Oh, or, or 100%. Us. Yeah. You, you, and I didn't think this was going to yeah. come up in this conversation. But when you say, how do I, when a leader asks, how do I know yeah. what I have? There are tools available and there's, there's, there's timeless uh, tools like the Myers Briggs, for example. And I love taking shots of this where yeah, yeah. You, know, you take a Myers Briggs where I fill out an evaluation of myself, yeah. right? I answer questions yeah. about me and then it crunches through whatever the, 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 you know, all of the, the, um, the process they yeah, go yeah, through yeah. and you get it done. And I filled out the survey on myself and I get the results and I'm like, Oh, that's so me. Yeah. Well, yeah of yeah. course it is. <laughs> yeah. You're so, the one answering the questions. Right. So one of the thing, the best tools to use is this 360 where, yep, I answer questions about myself, but if you're my supervisor, you answer the same yep. question, the same exact questions. Yep. So I can see how I rate myself on a dynamic and you rate myself. Then we ask my peers, they answer the same questions and my subordinate. So 360 degrees around me, exactly. I'm getting feedback that gives us the data. We're part of the way there. Yep. Once we have the data, that's where folks like you and I, what do you do with that data? Yes, yes. Sometimes exactly. people don't see themselves as high performing as they are. They have unutilized capacity. Yes. Sometimes people see themselves way above where everybody else sees them. That's a different issue. Yep. Yep. And that's that's kind of what I was getting by saying is people are going to watch us and it might seem like it's easy for us to talk about it, but just because we've done this kind of thing before. The reason why we do these podcasts, just like you said, is to bring that education to you yes. so you can have that yeah. idea of how to, you know, consume this knowledge, but also put it into play. Right. And that, that's so that's I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I was yeah. getting out of that type of thing. Yeah. Um, well, go ahead. Nope. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, I think there's a topic that you and I might disagree on. I wanted to dive into that. Let's go, baby. Hit me with it. <laughs> you go. No. <laughs> I'm trying to remember now what the topic was that because I I have an idea, but I wonder if it's the same one. So was it was it the toxic leadership part? Well, that's where I was going to go next. Oh, so well, I let's think go the, there first. Let's go okay. there first. The to, the because to, I think what we're talking about with the uh, um, I had a client at one point and um. It was a financial institution mm -hmm. and um, private ownership. There was a president that just was not doing the job. Yeah. And, and, there, and, and without getting into a bunch of detail, it was just bad. It was really bad. Now, the owner brought me in to help work with this president to, to, to you know, smooth out a bunch of rough edges. When ownership didn't lead, when they didn't set clear expectations, because I'm just the outside yeah. Consultants, yeah. coach, advice, whatever you want Third to call me at that point. Yep. When there wasn't the clear expectations, and more importantly, in this case, the follow through, that toxic leadership that was at first associated with the president, when things rolled out month after month, that toxic leadership transitioned to the owner, mm. who was the true leader in that. And so that that is a very important part of toxic leadership is not just your own toxicity. Yeah. Um, if, if that's part of who you are, but how much toxic behavior, how much toxic DNA do you allow to happen as it relates to how customers are treated, how you're yeah. going to market yeah. the culture, some of those other, yeah, the, what what gets by. I mean, that's huge because just like we talked about with culture branding, if you have a terrible internal culture, it's going to reflect external. Absolutely. I mean, you could hide it, right? There's there's some people who say like, oh, it's so great to work here. But then you talk to him, it's like, no, it's very like cultish in a bad way there. Right. And it's like, right. you like you know, you have to work extra hours and, and it's super micromanaging and it's yada, yada, yada. But yeah, they put on yeah. this facade yep. that it's incredible, yeah. right? But because customers will pick up on that, right? Your, your secret's only going to last so long with that. That's why it's toxic. Right. So, and I think you're bringing up an important point about customers because in, in leadership, your customer, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very passionate about this. As the leader, your customer is your employees. Yeah. Yeah. Those are your employees. Now there's a bunch of old cliches. The customer is always right. Does that apply here? We could debate that. We won't <laughs> yeah. today. Yeah. Um, but, um, 
that that is a very important part of this is knowing who your customer is if you're the leader and your customer is your employees you know that by taking care of that customer yeah they will take care of exactly the actual customer exactly. so when you think about toxic leadership what are some of the themes some of the modern day issues that come to mind for Ye- you yeah well and and before i get to that I, I was just thinking out the that whole example that you just gave and it's like if you're a toxic leader and you're reflecting that onto your employees How do you expect your employees to have like a great day or a great working day or be in a great mindset or be mentally, um, emotionally intelligent or mentally healthy, right? People are going to notice that you, I'm sure you guys have walked into stores before, whether it be retail or, um, a cert, you know, any type of thing, a a bank, anything. And you just have like a terrible experience with one of the associates, whether it's a cashier or, um, just helper or anything. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, it might be because they're just having a bad day, but at the same time. It might not be. It might be from that toxic leadership and yes. that's how it reflects. And then you give that customer a terrible experience in your institution, whatever it may be. Right, right. So that's that trickle down effect that really affects that. Now yes. to your question, some traits in a toxic leadership sure. for these days. Um, I mean, to me, there's a lot of obvious ones. Like um, if you're a leader who's, you know, like we've said before, narcissistic, or if um, you're very authoritative, which we just discussed, doesn't work. Um, if you're telling somebody one thing and telling a coworker or someone else a totally different thing, hey, Steve, love what you're doing right now. That's really good. You've been putting in really good hours and this project is really good. Hey, Bob, Steve is doing terrible. He, <laughs> you need to get on him right, to exactly. do better. You know what I mean? Like that. that so completely disingenuous, borderline, yeah. you know, liar, two faced. Exactly. Yep, All yep. of that stuff. Yep. Um, another toxic leadership thing that comes to mind too is not recognizing. Like this is this could be a whole another topic, right? It's like a totally overused phrase, but work life balance. Mm-hmm. Now that's another thing that I have a very different view of work life balance. I don't necessarily believe in a exact work life balance. I more so believe in any industry and job and business has its peak seasons and its low seasons. And at times you just have to put more emphasis on those peak right. seasons. You have right. to plug in more hours or work hard or whatever it may be. And then when it's not that, that's when everything else st- starts to come first. Right. Um, but maintaining that healthy balance, if you have a toxic leader or a trait these days and a toxic leader that I think about would be not even recognizing or, um, listening to your employees, not, not allowing them to have capacity and space for that Mm -hmm. mental health, for that emotional intelligence, all those kind of things. So, um, those are just a couple for me that, that red flag toxic leader. What about you? Um, and I think this is going to be a valuable exchange this Mm -hmm. and moving forward there, there is a difference between us and, 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 um, like when we talked about the leadership at the top of this, this podcast, you know, I, I, I think about leader leading self, you know, when it comes to leadership, when I think about, um, toxic leadership, I think about things like a lack of clear expectations. That's very toxic because it's so demoralizing for people if they don't know what they're doing. So that, you know, a lack of expectations. Um, one of the biggest toxic behaviors that I've seen leaders do over the last you know, 20, 30 years is to set an expectation, say, Hey, we're going to do this, you know, whether it's, um, uh, uh, um, giving raises or bonuses, or we're going to improve process, or we're going to spend on, on tools and computer or whatever. And then you don't do it. So you set an expectation and then nothing, that is absolutely so toxic because the trust goes, the credibility goes, your integrity is, is, is questioned. Um, promoting people for, um, tenure right just well so-and-so's been here for so long when somebody else is just killing it yeah day after day month after month quarter after quarter year after year but so-and-so's been that is incredibly toxic no innovation right we don't improve processes because leadership or a manager or a department or an owner feels more comfortable doing what they're doing i think allowing people to stay in their comfort i think all that we could have an a entire conversation list, a of CVS just, receipt right of- <laughs> but that's what i think in the modern day those yeah. choices that leaders make i think that's incredibly toxic mm-hmm. lying cheating i mean all of that other stuff i think that goes without saying yeah exactly that, yeah yeah a hundred percent i mean you just brought up some great points that i feel like we could elaborate on immensely but um 
<laughs> to stay on topic, we won't. But some right. of those were, I mean, re- yeah, huge points. Huge. I points think we should you. do some storytelling. We got a happy yeah. hour that yep. we need to shoot. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's right. And- yeah. Yeah. So um, happy hour. If you guys haven't checked out those yet, so we so part of the po- the the whiteboard session podcast, we have three different kind of things. We have water cooler conversations, which are our um, kind of shorter. Uh, shorter videos, if you will. They're the quick two minute hits on a particular topic. Uh, we have our whiteboard session podcast, which is what we're doing now on, yeah. on main topics. So you usually run a half hour plus. Yeah. Um, and then we have happy hour, right? So happy hour is just a little bit different, a little more casual, a different kind of bevy of topics. And, and so, yeah, Hopefully you have to pro- check out all Provocative three. and edgy. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and if we were, we're going to get thrown off the air, it's probably... That's going to be for yeah. that. Yep, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Is that possible to get thrown off the air on podcasts? Uh, maybe. I think there's yeah. got to be. Yeah. There's got to be. Well, yeah. we, won't, we won't push we it. Won't, yeah, yeah, we won't try that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and so one of the things quickly before we move on to the next thing was, I think one of the most important things you said there, at least in my mind, and maybe it's because I'm younger, so you'll have to let me know if it's definitely something that is because I'm of a younger generation or not, but when it comes to the best person for the job, yes, toxic leadership, you want to you want to promote somebody who's been there for a really long tenure or who's just next up or yeah. Yeah. because maybe they operate like the toxic leader, but they not might not be exactly the person for the job. For me, I'm always under the assumption of best person for the job. doesn't matter if you're male, female, gay, straight, uh, black, white, purple, green, yellow, been there yes. one year, 10 years, it doesn't matter. Right best person for the job and then this is a whole nother topic i don't want to get sidelined but the compensation reflects the job not the person yes right yeah that's all it is yeah Yeah. you know toxic leader will take that spin on 10 different ways yeah one of the um um in lead i I think things actually i know things have changed in leadership in the last you know let's just say 20 years there are some big differences there's some other things that I think are timeless. Um, Ken Blanchard, famous for the one minute manager. And then um, he was also part of developing probably one of the most used leadership training programs um, used by most of the Fortune 500, uh, Fortune 100 companies called Situational Leadership. In that program, they break down two terms called successful leadership and effective leadership. And they define successful leadership by getting you know, the results and um, basically hitting those hard objectives that that that's the success. Um, Effective is getting, you know, the behaviors and and, um, the commitment and some of that other stuff. And so in that program, there's a it's a a two day program, which I think that probably these days they're probably doing it one. But in that program, they, they they define those two terms and they ask people, can you be a successful leader? without being effective. In other words, can you get the results mm. without getting the commitment and the behaviors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the simple answer is, yeah, yep. Yeah. You can be a hard ass. You can drive people. You can be the big, you know, asshole boss and get yeah. the results and yeah. be quote unquote successful. Yeah. Yeah. Then the question becomes, okay, can you be effective? Right. Can you get the behaviors and the commitment and stuff without the objectives, without the outcomes, I should say. Yeah. What do you think? Can without you be effective success. without being successful? I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. I, this, I mean, this is completely on the spot. I've never thought about that. And I'm still kind of unpacking the first point too because I also want to say like everybody's idea of success is different too, right? That authoritative leader, that toxic leader, whatever right, it may be, right. who's saying like this is what it is and, we're, and, and no yeah, they, they might be successful. Successful dollar-wise, successful yeah. In the Blanchard program, wise. they just define it and say success is the results. It's yeah, the yeah. objectives, the okay. outcomes. That That's how they define yeah. it. And then the effective is the behavior yeah. and so on and so forth. So, um, Man, that's a tough one. I think so if if we're talking about effectiveness, if you if you're able to implement or you know that you got the behaviors you got the goals um the be- man i i think you can still be successful 100 percent. but but what 100% about effective? Of time? But, but, but can you so the the answer is you yeah. can be successful without effective right yep, you can yep, yep. be hardcore yeah can you be effective can you have the behaviors and the commitment without hitting the objectives can you be effective without being successful oh man um mm. yeah this might be a this might be a good point of debate here i th- i would say man i would say yeah you could be effective without being successful see and knowing you i'm yeah. surprised at your answer because you yeah. you are an outcome driven guy mm-hmm. and what blanchard says in that program is you cannot yeah you cannot have the behaviors 
and the commitment and all of that, we'll call it soft stuff Mm -hmm. without hitting the objectives because people aren't going to like to lose long term. Mm. So can you be, can you hit the objectives without the soft stuff? Yes. Can you have the soft stuff without hitting the objectives long term? And the answer is no. Being effective is the goal. And that's one of the, the only reason I bring that up is that's a timeless principle that uh, I think I became familiar with that in uh, right around 2000. And it, it, and it stuck with me that one thing that is never, ever, ever going to change about leadership is you better hit the outcome. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether it's profit or progress or innovation or be on the cutting edge of technology or For be sure. Amazon, Walmart, if that, and, and go, you know, strip costs out and convenience and so on and so forth. Go ahead. Yeah. So I guess my, and, and who knows, maybe I'm learning stuff right alongside with you guys today. <laughs> my, my, like, not argument, but my, um, question would be so if you're effective with all this stuff right if there's a right there's a goal set a vision set and you're effective with stuff you're effective with all these aspects of being a leader you're gonna say yeah and what if that goal that was set that vision that was set wasn't the right one yeah or what if it's halfway through you have to pivot yeah. you know then you could still be effective with that main thing but if the main thing wasn't right then Right. And, and I it's think you're asking, in my opinion, Adam, a legitimate question. And I think this is where, as people get to know us, they're going to know that you love to win. <laughs> right? I mean, you're seriously, um, you're a very disciplined guy with um, your personal world. I mean, you and Nicole, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you're very committed to that relationship. And, um, and I'm not trying to be, you know, your commitment to your animals mm-hmm. and the commitment to your your health and your mm-hmm. fitness and having worked with you, you are an outcome driven guy. Yeah. And you don't yeah. like to win for winning's sake, but we've had a lot of one on one conversations mm-hmm. over the last couple of years where we thrive on that. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. We like to see our own progress because it's personally satisfying. Mm-hmm. And so when you make a statement like that, just so everybody knows out there, it, growing. Yeah. Um, those hitting those benchmarks and increasing production or profit or progress, that's important to you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I like to ask questions along the way because I, I feel like it's one of those things where if you're not asking all the questions, you might be missing one. Yeah. And if you have a goal, it might not be the goal the whole time. Yeah. And, you know, much like we talk about on these podcasts, the customer journey, obviously marketing is my kind of, um, wheelhouse. Um, if you're not asking all the questions along the way, if you're not anticipating issues or different sides of the coin, if you're just like, this is a great idea and this is how we're going to get there and yeah. I'm going to be effective with getting to that point. Yep. But if you're not seeing the whole picture. So yeah, for me, I, I do like to be, and I don't want to say like, I like to be detail oriented because I think that's another like overused thing. Cause even if you're detail oriented, you can always miss small things. But I think if you ask enough questions yeah. and you keep asking questions, you're constantly learning. That's yes. a huge part. If you are the person who thinks, that you're the smartest and you know everything and you're yeah. the smartest one in the room? Yep. Well, yep. Probably not. So you're using a term that I like and I think a lot of people relate to and that's pivot. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason, I remember that old Friends episode. <laughs> Did you ever see that one? <laughs> They're lifting a yes, couch the up couch the stairwell. Is there. Pivot! Pivot! <laughs> pivot. <laughs> um, but what I, I, um, I have had the humble great fortune of working with some incredibly successful entrepreneurs, um, people that have established an incredible amount of wealth um, that they've created. Mm-hmm. And um, as you were talking about pivoting, one of the things that I've asked a lot of these people over the years is when it comes to wealth and when it comes to success in life, did the bulk of your success and wealth come more from discipline or from being opportunistic? Mm, and yeah, overwhelmingly, yeah. their response was being opportunistic. Yes, that when something it's... presented itself... I think that's your pivot. Yeah, that's And I think leadership exactly. these days is just like you said, yeah, we got to be totally focused on where we're mm-hmm. going, but unlike the horse with the blinders on that yeah, just yeah. looks at that finish line, yep. modern day leadership being effective, you better glance side to yep. side or you better have an organization or a team set up that somebody else yep. is looking around to make sure that we don't have to be or need to be mm-hmm. 
pivoting yeah. or taking advantage of something that pops up. Which is another great point to how we explained the difference between leadership and management in the beginning. When you're a leader, you might start that vision, but then you step aside. Maybe you're back here, over here, because you're letting them do that. And and if you're up front and just saying like the whole time and just saying, this is what we're doing, this is the path we're going down, then you miss those things. Yeah. But if you're yeah. back, you let people do their things, somebody will catch it because that's going to be somebody's job or that's going to be something somebody feels trusting and vulnerable enough to point something like that out or yes. ask the question yes. and feel like it's yes. going to be, feel like they're heard yes. and you know, yep. valued yep. and all things like that. So I want to bring up a, 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 a kind of a side note related to what we're talking about. I think these are all great concepts, philosophies, theories, mm-hmm. and, and, and hopefully people feel like this is a good use of their time. How does somebody operationalize a conversation like this because many times what happens is is people might agree in theory like even you know i think about the one dinosaur that you, yeah. you and i have in yeah, common yeah. as far as leadership yep. and um i think that people that are not effective they might believe that they are they would be in a hundred percent agreement with the concepts with which we've been speaking. Yes. Yet when the rubber hits the road in their own business and they need to pivot, I think I know where you're going with this. They won't exactly. Right. Because it's not their idea. It's, it's not in their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. That can be very toxic and they slide into something that, and this is not my phrase, but it's called right fighting. Yeah. Where in the moment, they will try to prove somebody else wrong to make themselves right in that moment. And that behavior, that choice to prove somebody wrong to make themselves right, that's one of the most toxic things you can do in a marriage, uh, with yep. your kids, with yep. friends, yep. and certainly in business is to try to prove people wrong rather than encouraging environment where people are exchanging ideas. We're not speculating about stuff. We're not getting overly heavy on our opinion Mm -hmm. or we're throwing out all these ridiculous hypotheticals that people get all bent out of shape on. So I think that's another um, actual moment that people can look out for in this conversation about leadership on how to keep that healthy and productive. Yeah. I think, I think a good leader should be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I think if you're, again, if you're a good leader, you should be asking those questions. You should be humble. You should be second guessing some of the things just to make sure you're right. Finding those details, finding those holes, finding the other side of the coin, right? You might think you have the best product, but what if something goes wrong with that product? Do you know how to handle it? Do you know which way to go with that? Um, if you think you have the best product, but then uh, and then somebody else has an idea, is that a better one? Should yeah. you go down yep. that avenue? Yep. Can you pivot? Yep. But just operating solely to stay comfortable and feel like you're in command and all that kind of stuff, isn't a good leader. It's a toxic leader. Right. Um, so you mentioned this, this overused phrase and I know you didn't necessarily mean it in that, you know, get comfortable with being yep. uncomfortable. I just want to blow that out of the water. At the beginning when I, you asked me about my definition of leadership and I said, it's lonely. It's persistently lonely. It is persistently, fundamentally, genuinely a hundred percent uncomfortable because with leadership, good leadership, solid, healthy leadership, fortunately or unfortunately, you're so often put in new circumstances where you think, oh my gosh, you know, at some point, when do I get to a point where something feels comfortable, where it feels predictable? Because with good leaders, when you're, when you're, you're carving out new ground, when you're blazing new trail, when you're innovating, when you're keeping your yourself and your people focused, there are always new issues, which makes you either intellectually mm-hmm. processed or system uncomfortable or um, emotionally uncomfortable. And and I think that that is another thing that people, oh, I want to be the leader. I want to be the leader. Well, get ready to be fundamentally, profoundly uncomfortable. Yeah. And it is exhausting. And you got five, 10, 100, 100,000 people right. relying on your ability to meet that uncomfortable situation and pivot correctly. Right. They are all waiting exactly. on you to do that. Exactly. And so I just want to paint this little picture. And it's a little extreme. I have been known to overstate a point to make a point. <laughs> when, and this is my experience with, with this last bunch of years, that when you're doing very well as a leader, people think, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? And then when things are tough and you're really feeling it, people 
don't have a lot of compassion. Oh, yeah. poor baby. Yeah, you know, yeah, poor yeah. baby. You got the big fat check in the corner office yeah, and all of that, yeah, yeah. you know, leverage and influence and power. Poor, you know, well, for those that really want it, um, you are going to be misjudged, misunderstood, yes. taken for granted at other times. But I think that um, it's completely worth it for mm-hmm. those that endeavor to be yeah. leaders, first yeah. of all, of themselves and then. Yeah. earning the right to lead other exactly. other people in enterprises. and enterprises. And with that will come the success in various ways of people that define success. And right. you know what I mean? And right. so d- that also depends on what kind of leader you want to be, what kind of successful leader you want to yeah. be. Yeah. You, everyone defines their own, you know, d- they have their own definition of success. So as yeah. a leader, if um, success again means that, that dollar mm-hmm. or that position yeah. or, um, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's totally up to the person. Yeah. The last thing I want to say, yeah. I think we're winding down on, on leadership. Last thing I'd... Has it been 15 minutes? Yeah, it's been about <laughs> five or 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to let that one down. <laughs> well, I, I think that that's a, that's a, good, um, a, a, a good example of when you're doing something that you're passionate about yeah, and yeah. is meaningful and time you're committed flies. to. Yeah, time, time flies. Um, I, I want... The, not at length here, but um, how important strategy mm-hmm. is. Um, there's a, there was a book written a number of years ago called Blue Ocean Strategy, and yeah. it's a great picture Love about yep. you know the red ocean, where, this bloody red ocean where there's um, you know benchmarking and you're comparing to your competitors and um, you're you know trying to build a better mousetrap, and then there's blue ocean where you know simply put, it's uncontested market space, and I think that um, that is an essential. Uh, quality of, of good leaders is that they are constantly seeking that blue ocean and yes. um it's it, it, not easy i don't want to say it's easy it is simple to stay in the red ocean and and cut costs and be more efficient and benchmark across uh, against your competition but that blue ocean you know innovating truly finding yeah. those, those new frontiers i think when i met you that was one of the first things i learned from you was this blue ocean concept and i think you used the example of the uh Callaway Big Bertha driver. Yeah, yeah. that's a great. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah, that's that's if if you haven't read that book, yeah. if you're not familiar with that book, there's some there's some awesome concepts in that book. There's some some mm-hmm. wonderful true stories which I love um, about leadership um, using actual examples. Um, is it Yellowtail Wine? Those yes. those two yep, stories Yellowtail in that book are, are great. And yep. then there's some uh, there's some tools in that book. You can look it up online as well. Mm-hmm. Um, some conversations you can have to truly. Get yeah. to Blue Ocean. One of the things that I love about that is it kind of consistently pushes you to be creative and innovative. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really healthy for a business, for any business. Yeah. Even the unsexy ones that we always talk about, yeah. you know. <laughs> hey, if you're an accounting firm, <laughs> yeah. woo, we're, we're gonna be creative and innovative today. <laughs> exactly. You're darn right. Yeah. No, and and I think I th- I just think that is because I think it constantly makes you think about you know, what could you do next? What is there, is there a gap or a, or something that you could be missing? Right. right? right. Just like you said, it's very easy to say, you know what, I'm going to make a better microphone. It's going to, it's going to maybe look different right? or it might sound a little bit better yeah. or yeah. whatever it is, but there's millions of microphones in the, in the yeah. space. Yeah. Right. Um, but like, and I don't want to get into all the examples that the book uses, but just that ability to take whatever you have as a business, even if you're just an employee, even if you're, if you're a leader, if you're an employee, it doesn't matter when you have that blue ocean mindset. I think that's amazing. And I think if leaders install or instill, <laughs> instill, install, <laughs> the authoritative leader would install that the, yeah. the good leader would instill that. Yeah. yeah. Um, in, in all their employees, you know, in the culture yeah. to yep. have people, the freedom to think like that, yeah. freedom to, Hey, what do you got? Yeah. You know, you mentioned Apple last time and, you know, yeah. as, as a kid that grew up in the seventies and eighties to think that in this one device is a computer, yeah. a phone, uh, a camera mm-hmm. and one of those enormous boom boxes yep, that, yeah. we used to, that there it is <laughs> yeah, and exactly. it goes in my pocket. Um, I can pull up any song I can call anywhere. I can, you know, do yeah. all sorts of thing. You talk about blue ocean, you know, and, and all of that good stuff. It's, yeah. it's very exciting. There are tangible results from this conversation that we're having yeah. today about leadership. It takes yeah. people to say, look, I feel called. I feel compelled to pursue mm-hmm. leadership, knowing that it's not just about 
us. We do have to lead ourselves first if we're going to earn that right. But ultimately, some incredibly wonderful things um, can yeah. can take place and yeah. change the world. If that I, doesn't sound too corny. No, I, and I think as you're as you're listening to this, you're probably thinking of all the cool stuff that you have or have experienced. That at one point that was revolutionary. That yeah. was a blue ocean at yeah. one point. Yep. You yep. know, and that's that's incredible to think that way. So those that and I just want I haven't said this in the podcast yet, but. Um, Coming up on on Friday is the the eleventh anniversary of my wife Angie, who oh. who passed away from breast cancer. She was mm-hmm. forty two at the time, and and um, I think about this podcast and how meaningful it is to us for our yeah. own reasons, and how you know we've got a lot of business um, uh, principles here, and we relate this to business, and that's kind of the framework with which we we use this. Yeah. I hope that this podcast is also helpful to people that are trying to lead a family yeah. or lead yeah. a relationship or things like yeah. that. Because when Angie and I started our business, um, in 1999, you know, we had some of these things about, you know, strengthening relationships and improving communication and this whole piece about energy, which is just the feelings, emotions and attitude and then commitment. You know, we were very committed to those four things and building this business. And, you know, when she died, um, suddenly after 15 months of breast cancer, I mean, who, who dies these days from breast cancer? Well, she did. Those dynamics became um, the blueprint for four kids and I. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, 11, 9, 7, and 2 mm-hmm. were the kids when she died. And so I just want to make sure that people understand that yeah. this isn't just totally a business thing, that we exactly. can apply these leadership principles to to other things in life and hopefully that uh, can help people out. Yeah, 100%. And whenever I think about it, you know, we, we talk a lot about trust, communication, energy commitment yeah. relationships yeah yeah it doesn't sound very businessy yeah and that's the that's the beauty of it you can uh, apply these principles to not only your business but your relationships friends family yep. yeah, spouses sure. everything yeah absolutely yeah and that's what i love about it well and i like that about th- this you know yeah. we get a chance to pick who uh, mm-hmm. who's in our life and we pick people i think right. leadership, self-leadership is picking people who are going to bring the best out of you that's and right you keep that's doing right. that so well appreciate <laughs> thank that thank you steve yeah, yeah. i appreciate it. well uh, I mean, this this podcast to me has been really special because I've um, really struggled with past leadership, past bosses, if you will, past management. Yeah. Um, and so this is something I, I really like take to heart. And I hope other people do, you know, pick up something from this, whether yeah. you're a leader or an employee. And yeah. just know that there are, if you are a leader, there are employees that think that maybe even about yourself, but just in general. And so um, to be able to use this is, is something that's going to bring me a lot of um, joy is yeah. just to see people use this content for the better. Yeah. Yeah. So thank awesome. you for today, Steve. I appreciate thank you. it. Great. And topic. Thanks for tuning in and yep. Episode five. You got it in the books, man. Leadership. All right. We'll see you next time. See you next time.